We're going to be talking a bit about how to do animations within Wix and Velo itself. So you'll have two options. You can do a couple little bits of animation within the UI, and then you can do far more complex animations if you start writing some code in Velo. Just to give you a little advice before we get started, uh, obviously this is to everybody's taste, but I would personally say that shorter animations tend to be better than longer animations. You don't want to keep uh, your visitors waiting around a long time for an animation to go by. And also I would say that as a general rule, you should really only animate elements that your users don't have to interact with. So elements on the page that are simply part of decoration are fine to animate. However, if there's some sort of button or something that you need your user to click or engage with, then I would caution against animating those because then the user has to wait for the animation to finish before they can go ahead and do anything else. So let's get into it. First, the simplest way to do animations is to simply do it in the UI. And this gives you a few options. So here, you know, I have uh, my little fake website, Bouncing Ball Entertainment, and I kind of want this ball to do something. Um, you'll see they there's only so many things you can do, but uh, as far as this, let, let's have the ball do this animation this little turn in animation. We can press the little play button here and see what it does. We can change kind of the direction that it comes from. It can come from the left or the right. We can change the duration. Like I said, I like short animations. So that to me looks right. Uh, we also have an option to only animate it the first time, which basically means that if a user were to navigate from this page to another page on our website and back again, they wouldn't see the animation again. Uh, that might be useful depending on the effect you're going for. But if they reloaded the page, they'd see the animation again. So let's just check that out now that we've added our first animation. All right, and there it goes. We've got our little animation, and we can head back to our editor. So that's what you do in the UI. Uh, the different animations sometimes have slightly different options, and there's a variety of little animations you, you, can, you can choose here. But when we do these animations, we're very limited. We can't, you know, trigger them based on certain events happening. We don't have too much control over what happens. We actually can't even loop the animations using the UI editor. So for those types of things, we would want to use Velo. So on another page, as I've cleverly named it, uh, we have two more little objects that we want to animate. And what we can see here, is we've called one bouncing ball and one spinning triangle. So we want to interact with these. If we want to know how to interact with these, we're going to head over to our API reference, go over to Wix animations, click the drop down, and click on timeline. So what timeline will do is essentially give us a way to control a series of animations. And then we'll add things to this timeline in order to, in order to actually animate them. So the timeline itself is something that we can, as you can see in, in the guide over here, we can play, reverse, and pause all our animations. And once we've assembled our time, and that's what we'll do once we've assembled the timeline. So first, after declaring the timeline, we'll assemble it. So we'll come over here, okay, cut, um, and so now if we head over to another page, we'll see I've laid out two little uh, elements here that we can interact with and we're going to animate them. So let me expand the code that I've written over here and it's fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, obviously if you want to learn this stuff in detail you're going to head over to the API reference. I'll probably use the API reference a little later too uh, and it'll show you essentially how to construct and use timeline. Uh, but the general process is you're going to create a new timeline using the timeline function. 
Then you're going to add animation attributes and sequence them using the add function, which we're going to do in a moment. And then you can control how the timeline plays. You can play it forward, you can play it in reverse, you can pause it, you can replay it. You have all those functions available to you. So let's construct our timeline. All right. Uh, I'll set up my timeline with a couple little bit of options. Um, you can provide basically an object here that are the configuration options for your timeline. What I'm going to say is we're going to repeat. Uh, that basically means that once a animation is finished, it will go back and loop. Uh, specifically, you can set a certain number of times. You can say repeat zero, which is the default, which basically means it'll play once and that's it. You can say repeat two and it'll play an initial time plus two more. You can also say, you know, repeat negative one and it will play to infinity. And for repeat, since it's playing to infinity, once it gets to its kind of end animation, I want it to go back uh, and I don't want it to just keep playing forward. Um, so I'll include the yo-yo option here. So actually, if I include the yo-yo option, uh, let me change one little thing here just for demonstration purposes. Don't mind me. And I go ahead and preview. What we'll see is the animation is kind of jerky because as you see the ball's bouncing, uh, but then it just resets to the first frame of the animation. There's no part of the animation to have the ball go back down, essentially play this animation in reverse. You can see the triangle also feels jumpy and jittery like that. Uh, and that's kind of what yo-yo does. So if we head back over and we set, set our yo-yo option to true, and then we go ahead and preview, what you'll see is they play forward and then back in reverse. And that gives a much smoother animation You know when we are trying to loop things infinitely. You can actually code other animations and get things back to the place you want to uh, in other ways, but yo-yo is nice because it kind of does it for us. I'm also gonna remove this that I put there and I'll, I'll go over that in a moment. So when we add the animations, what we generally do is we'll say timeline.add, we will give it the elements that we want to manipulate, and then we'll give it a series of options. So for bouncing the ball, uh, and you'll, you can actually see all these options over in timeline. If you go to the add section, you will see that there is a whole set of animation attributes that you can configure. So I won't go into all of those right now, but they're over, they're over here if you want to see them. So what we'll do here is we'll add it, and this is basically how to bounce. You know, we're saying we want this to last 1600 milliseconds, this animation. We're going to set the y value, and you could also set the x value. We're going to set the y value to go negative 150 pixels, which means it's going to go up. Uh, and then we're going to set easing, which is kind of the, the rate at which it moves. Um, you know, you can just leave this out and it'll be like a linear easing. But there are a variety of different types of easing that affect the rate at which uh, the ball moves. So in ease and bounce, it kind of goes quick and then does this. Uh, if it were a linear easing, it would go just a lot, a lot smoother through. You know, you can have very exponential easing where it might start off slow and then go up quicker. There's a whole bunch of options there. Uh, and then, you know, we would do the same with the triangle. We'd set the duration. Again, I set it at the same speed, 1600 milliseconds, because I wanted, I want these items to, to animate together. And then rotate, I want the triangle to rotate 360 degrees. So then after I've added the two animations I want, I can go ahead and say, hey, timeline, let's play. And that should, you know, animate everything. So what I'm expecting now, and what might not actually be the case, is I want the ball to bounce. And while the ball is bouncing, the triangle is also going to rotate. And so if I go ahead and click preview, we see something interesting has happened. And this is kind of related to that little bit of code I told you I, I, I changed and I'll I tell you about it in a little bit. Uh, naively, when I was constructing this in my head, I figured that everything I added to an animation 
would go ahead and simply run at the same time. But when you have complex animations, you actually want them to go generally in stages. So I add my animation for the bouncing ball, the bouncing ball one runs, then my animation for the triangle, the triangle one runs. And while this is great for constructing quite a lot of variety of animations, this isn't actually what I want here. What I wanted is them to both start at the same time. So we can actually manipulate that. And you'll notice if I come back to my code. So over here, uh, back in my code, uh, if we come down to timeline.add, you'll notice before I put a zero here. And what does that zero mean? That zero is referring to an offset. So if we come over to the API reference, it's not under, it doesn't get added to your animation object. Like you don't add it where you add rotate and duration. This is actually another argument to the add function. And you can basically say, I want this animation to start at this offset from the start. So all your animations are gonna start at, your timeline is gonna start at zero milliseconds. And then each of your animations, if you have like one that lasts for one second, and another one that lasts for one second, you have a two second animation there. And you can essentially adjust that and say, oh, well, the second thing that I added, I don't want it to start at the second second, I want it to start right at the beginning. So I'm gonna give it offset zero. You can also give it a variety of offsets. So if you're getting into more complex animations where you need things to start shortly before or shortly after other th elements, you can do that by providing a variety of, of options here. So I won't go into all those, but now we see that since I've added the zero here, this will, this will animate just a bit differently. So I'll come down here and there we see we have the animation working exactly as I want it to, which is that both the, both the elements are animating together as, as I had, had expected and had imagined when I was initially coding it. So that's a really easy thing to get hung up on. Um, it's happened to me personally when I first started working with Timeline. And that's basically what there is for for animation. So yes, thank you for watching this episode of Vibe with Velo and I look forward to seeing you the next time. All right. Bye.